Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Jess in Progress. In today's lifestyle discussion, I'm going to be answering this very popular question. How do I convince my spouse to swing? I have a really good answer for you guys. So if you're ready, stick with me and let's have some fun. All right, guys, so today's question came in from a community member right here on YouTube. He asked me very simply, how do I convince my wife to swap? Well, I have a few steps to help you get started in getting your wife to swing. But first, I want to dispel the rumor that's all over online that says you cannot and you should not try to convince your wife or your husband to swing. It is so absolutely wrong. And I can't wait to share this with you guys. OK, so let's get into it. If you've ever searched online and gotten answers that say things like this, you cannot try to convince your spouse to swing. That's terrible. <laughs> then you're not alone, okay? That is what we're confronted with when we take this topic online. People seem to think that if you ask somebody about something or try to convince them to do things a little differently, if you try to open them up to a lifestyle change, then oh my gosh, you're a terrible person. But that's not true. This is no different than somebody trying to convince their spouse to become a vegan. This is no different than somebody trying to convince their spouse to leave a job that you can see that they're miserable in. It's just bringing up a lifestyle change and there are two of you in this relationship. There are two of you living your lives together and it is totally okay to bring up and even try to convince your spouse of your thinking, of your thoughts and your ideas for a lifestyle. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. So when you are confronted online by people telling you, you can't do that, you're terrible. Oh no, they didn't sign up for this. Okay, people change and that's all right. Now, that doesn't mean you can force your spouse to do anything. As a matter of fact, you cannot ever force your spouse to do anything that they don't want to because I mean, would you want to be forced to do something you don't want to do? No. But is it okay if somebody tries to convince you of something? Sure. Maybe you'll even open your mind to what they're saying, but you have every capability of saying no, right? So that is why I wanted to tell you guys, you absolutely can convince your spouse to swing. You can at least try, right? So I'm going to set you up with some tools that I think are going to help you when it comes to convincing your spouse. So let's get into this part, okay? Because I know that's what you're here for. Full disclosure, I never had to convince my husband to become a swinger. And my husband didn't have to convince me to become a swinger. We met young as teenagers and we talked openly and honestly about the fact that we weren't through experimenting when it came to others. And we just moved on from there. We didn't even realize at first that we were swingers. So that actually brings me to my next point. And my next point is that this is best discussed before marriage. So if you know this is something that you're into and you're not yet married, this is definitely something you should discuss before you guys tie the knot, before you guys make it legal, before you guys get yourself into a possible mess. You should always fully disclose who you are. If you're already married, if you've already tied the knot and you know, sometimes people change after they put a ring on it. Okay. You are always evolving. You are always changing. And that is okay. As a matter of fact, that's phenomenal. That's wonderful that you're not staying stagnant, right? So if this is a new thing in your life, if this is not something you could have expressed before you were married, that's okay. There are some definite ways for you right now that you can get started in convincing your spouse to swing. Okay, so before you even bring this to your spouse, the first thing that you need to do is you need to evaluate your romantic life and your sex life with your spouse. Are you just tired of your wife? Are you bored? Do you wish you could be anywhere else? Are you actually thinking about a divorce? Are you just staying around for your kids and trying to make it through? Does your spouse make more money and so you don't really want to leave? Like, if any of this rings true for you, swinging is not for you. As a matter of fact, if your relationship is going down already, then swinging is just going to put more holes in your ship. Okay, y'all gonna sink faster than ever. And then it's probably going to be way worse of a breakup than you could have imagined. So if you're actually tired of your wife, if you're tired of your life, if things are not going well, this is not a solution. If you are on the other side of that, if you think to yourself, well, we're already going out, 
we're already staying in and watching movies. I already tell her she's beautiful every day because she is and she'll always be the highlight of my life. Do you guys still communicate about everything under the sun? Do you guys still hold hands to stay connected? Do you still laugh like teenagers? Do you guys still have a good sex life? Do you guys dress up for each other? Like that relationship is ready for swinging and you have way better chances at success if that's your foundation. The foundation that you build your house on is really important. If you're already on shaky, crumbling ground, your house is going to fall over and nobody wants to clean up that mess. Okay, so make sure your foundation is strong so you can build your house on it nice and firmly and be able to walk in there with a smile on your face for years to come, okay? I hope that made sense to you guys because that's the really, really important first step that you need to do here. So evaluate your relationship. All right, so you've evaluated your relationship and you feel your relationship is ready to swing. You've got a strong foundation. So what's next? Okay, so before you approach your spouse with this, you've got to remember this in your core. Majority of people in our culture, when approached with something like this, when you ask them, hey, want to have a threesome or hey, want to go to a sex club? They immediately panic. They're like, what? And their number one question is, am I not enough? Wait, 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 wait. I thought everything was good. Are we falling apart? Is something wrong? I, I thought everything was good. The amount of questions that go through people's heads, the amount of insecurities this can bring on to a person is phenomenal. And it's actually quite sad. Don't ever make your spouse feel like they're not enough. As a matter of fact, make sure that when the day comes in the next steps that you do bring it up. Make sure that your spouse knows this is about you two. This is about you guys as a team. This is about adventures that you're going to add to your life. And at the end of the day, it's you two that are going to go home and spend years upon years upon years together reminiscing about those funny times you guys had together. No different than the time you guys went to a concert or a skating rink or um, attended your kids' graduation. Like, they're all amazing memories. And you two came out of all of these things together with new memories, new experiences, and things that you're going to take into your old age while y'all rocking on your front porch and laughing about the lives you've had. So... It's always about you and your partner. Always. Never surprise your partner with the idea of other people. It's scary. When they didn't come up with the idea themselves, it's scary. So be understanding and make it about the two of you, okay? That's step two. Now, we're ready to approach our spouse, but maybe not in the way you think. All right, so you're ready to approach your spouse. The best way to start this conversation is going to be to wait until she is in a really good mood, she is turned on and she wants you. Or if it works better for you, wait until you've just had sex and you had a great time. You have pleasured her. She has pleasured you. And now you're at the point of pillow talk and you guys are embracing and you're chatting about what a good time you just had, right? This is a great time to bring it up. Either one of those, when she wants you or when she just had you, okay? You are going to start this off by telling her how amazing that thing she did was, right? And then ask her if there's anything she would like from you in bed. Is there anything she wants to try that she hasn't been able to recently? Does she want to go have hotel sex? Does she want to have car sex? That's fun. Does she want to, um, it doesn't matter what she says, really. Anything, absolutely any answer that your partner gives you can be expanded upon okay so let me give you some examples say for example she just wants to dress up again she wants to wear heels and she wants to wear lingerie and she wants to look sexy and she hasn't had time or space to do so you're gonna find the time you're gonna give her the space even if you need to take her to a hotel or something and if she doesn't have the lingerie because it's been a while you're gonna take her shopping okay you're gonna take your woman out and you can go buy her some lingerie whatever she wants okay it matters because you need to spoil your spouse you want them to expand on their sex life you got to give them the tools to do so right so you let her dress up you enjoy the crap out of it i'm sure that you will anyway and then you expand upon that by maybe asking if you can take pictures of her because you love the way she looks right now in the future you're going to expand upon that by saying hey would you mind if i posted these online now that might sound crazy to some of you but there are many boards on Reddit. There's ways on Instagram. If y'all 
have done your research. There's many ways to share pictures of your wife online. Now, why would you do that? Okay, you would do that because you want to open your relationship up to others. This opens up your relationship to validation from others. Your wife will now be validated from those others and she'll feel good about it. She'll feel good about herself and she'll be excited to continue, okay? So that's the only one example. Okay, so your wife's a little bit more adventurous. Maybe your wife is into anal sex. Well, go out, buy some toys, and how about you fantasy role play a double penetration? Go along that route for a while, and your wife's enjoying it. This is her fantasy come true, okay? She wants to do this. She likes anal sex. I'm sure she already likes vaginal sex. So mix up the two, make it really adventurous, and now you've got role play going on that is simulating sex with a third person. Be willing to bring in that third person. Talk about it, expand upon it. You see where I'm saying? Okay, so your wife's not that adventurous. She's not jumping on, hey, I wanna have more anal sex. Um, <laughs> maybe she's, maybe she's, maybe your wife's like actually really simple. Maybe she's like really quiet. Maybe she just likes to read. Maybe she only likes erotic literature. You can still expand upon this. How you can start to dirty talk, because literature is just words, right? So you can start to expand upon that, like for erotic literature, by starting to talk dirty to her during sexy times, okay? Start whispering in her ear some of your fantasies that you'd like to see come true while she's in the heat of the moment. Knowing that she likes erotic literature, you're gonna turn it into her fantasy book right then and there, okay? You just expand upon it. You're gonna bring those other people in, in one way or another, through her own fantasies. This is how you do it. This is how you get the wheels turning, okay? Okay, so step four, don't be a dummy. We're not gonna bring this up every day, okay? I know you're excited, I know you're excited. And you see that it's working. Your spouse is starting to open up to the idea of other people, right? So you're getting excited, just slow down. Remember, it's about the journey, not the destination. If you want to get there, you don't want to run out of gas, okay? Remember, especially if you're talking about convincing your wife, that women are on a hormonal roller coaster every month of the year. I know, why do I have to bring this up? Because it's true. You can say the same sentence to your wife at one point in the month and say the same sentence at another point in the month and you're going to get entirely different reactions. If you don't know what I mean, then you don't know your wife well enough. Okay, because women are on a hormonal roller coaster that actually influences a lot of how we think about sex at all given times. So be mindful of that roller coaster she's on because you can use this to your advantage. Don't drive her nuts when she's on the down of the month and make sure to lift her up when she's on the right side of the month. It's really important and it's simple and it's key. Okay, you guys be intuitive with your spouse. Pay attention to where they're at. It will make all of the difference. Again, don't be a dummy. If they're asking you to stop or why are you bringing that up so much, you're doing too much. It doesn't mean that it's it's a no, unless your spouse says, don't bring that up again. At which point it brings me to my last point. If at any point your spouse does express to you, hey, I'm not interested in that and I don't ever want to do that. It doesn't matter what time of the month she's on, if she's at her best moments and she's still just not into it, that's when the don't force it comes in. And as sad as it may be, I have to express to you guys that you have one life. I hope that you love your partner with all of your heart and that you would choose your partner over anything, anything else in this world. If your partner said, look, you can never eat meat again, we gonna be vegan. So if your partner says, no, I am not ever going to swing, you have to evaluate. Is this the life you want to live? I'm really sorry that I even have to bring that up. It's sad to me. It really is. And I would hate to be in that situation, but you have to then evaluate step five. Is this the life you want? Can you live the life your spouse wants and give up these seemingly nothing desires? Because I would hope you love your spouse enough to just let it go. But if this is a really big passion of yours and it's something that you really need in your life, you're going to have to evaluate whether or not you want to stay with your partner. Do you need a new partner? Do you want to go it alone? That's fact. Now, in closing, I do want to put this out there that being a woman myself, 
I would absolutely love to be there for any of y'all's wives, any of y'all's spouses who need a hand or have questions or are feeling unsure, send them to me. Have them ask me a question. I'm right here. All right, you guys, this has been fun. <laughs> If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up for me and then subscribe to the channel so that you can join me back here for another lifestyle discussion right here on Just in Progress. And until next time, you guys, I'll see you soon. <laughs>